Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. And their mother said to them, it is time for you to go out into the big world and to build your homes and to, to make your fortunes. You know that story? Anybody know the big, big bad wolf, the three little pigs and the big bad wolf? You know, if you think about that story, the mother sends her three little pigs out into the world with a mission. She gives them a mission. She says, you're going to go out there and you're going to build your homes and you're going to make your fortunes out in the world. That's their mission. It's, we have a mission here at Westminster, too. You can find it in our mission statement. We've been talking about this for a few weeks now. What's our mission statement? Share. Westminster Presbyterian Church is committed to sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. As members of the family of God is how it starts. But the good news, sharing the good news, that's our mission. And the Planning Council developed that mission statement several years ago when we first went through a long-range plan together. Now remember, each and every one of you in here, everybody here today, can be a part of the Planning Council. You don't even have to be a member of the church to come to the Planning Council. And right now we're meeting each Tuesday, except for Mardi Gras, we won't meet Mardi Gras, each Tuesday for new visions. And we will be doing, we are doing some more long-range planning. And I encourage each and every one of you to come. Your input is absolutely vital. Well, anyway, the Planning Council is developing our next three-year plan. Now, we're working to set before ourselves some initiatives that, that will be mission-oriented, our mission initiatives. Now, we recognize that these initiatives are in no way going to encompass all of the church's ministry because there's so much that we do but they will focus our attention into key developmental areas. For example, our previous mission initiatives that we came up with in our last three-year plan involve the areas of missions, evangelism, and personal growth. And no matter what initiatives that we develop this time around, each one will point us to a specific purpose. And that purpose, folks, is to build. Now, the success of our building, our construction in our personal lives and in the life of the church depends completely on the foundation that we use. In Matthew 7, 24 through 25, Jesus says, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rains came down and the floods rose and the winds beat and blew against that house, yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. Now we know that Jesus Christ is that rock, that foundation. In verse 11 of today's reading, it says, For no one can lay any other foundation than the one we already have, Jesus Christ. Now we know from our experiences with a oh, little, little lady named Rita that came barreling through here not too long ago, that foundations and building materials are extremely important. As builders of our own spiritual lives and our church, we have decisions that we must make. Will we build, build quickly and without quality and wind up with a house that can be easily blown away? Are, or are we going to build steadfastly and purposefully, building a house that cannot be blown away, a house made of materials that will endure? How are we doing with building our church and our own spiritual lives? Let's get back to those three little pigs for a minute. They had a mission, remember? So they packed up their bags and said goodbye to their mother. Then each little pig took a different path on its journey out into the world. Now the first little pig did not like hard work. So he quickly built his house of what? Does anybody remember? Straw, of straw. And you know, he built it on some soft sand too. He finished it that same day and that night he was laying in his hammock, really proud of himself for having completed his home so quickly. And he was looking forward to a lazy life of leisure. Now the first little pig was like the foolish builder in Matthew 7, 26 and 27. 
But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. The rains came down and the floods rose and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell down with a great crash. First little pig was lazy. He was like a Christian who is not concerned about putting effort into building his own spiritual life, who's not concerned about walking humbly with God, who is, in fact, apathetic. Now, Paul writes in Romans 12, 11, never be lazy in your work, but serve the Lord enthusiastically. It does take work to build your spiritual life. It takes zeal, it takes fervor, it takes effort. In other words, it takes the right kind of attitude. Now, the first little pig's attitude was, well, I'll just do whatever it takes to get by. And it reminds me of the man who complained to his pastor that they always sing the same hymns over and over in church. You know them, O Little Town of Bethlehem and Silent Night. That would be a good legitimate complaint if the man came on a day other than Christmas Eve. You see, what he was doing was what many people do, just enough to get by. He came once a year, not really to worship God, to, but to really kind of meet his own guilt, to satisfy that guilt and make it go away. They, they do just enough at church to keep them from feeling guilty instead of working to build up their spiritual lives. You see, if you're not putting 100% into your relationship with the Lord, if you aren't in Sunday school or in Bible study, if you aren't attending worship regularly or praying, you're not working at building your faith. And if you're doing just enough to get by, it's really all you're going to get. You're just going to get by. It takes zeal and determination and work to build our spiritual lives. 1 Peter 2, 2, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation. We have to be fed to grow into our faith so that then we can be equipped to reach out to others. We must encourage spirit, personal spiritual growth. Are we doing that? Well, back to our story. Second little pig. Now he took one look at that first little pig's house of straw and thought, mm -mm, nope, 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 I'm going to build mine out of what? Sticks, out of sticks. My stick house will look so much better than my brother's palm branch house over there. Little shack, little shack. Well, this little pig is more concerned about appearances than responsibility and obedience. So he builds his house of sticks in the middle of a lovely valley. It doesn't take him a whole lot longer than it did his brother, but it looks so much better that he's satisfied. And that night he lies on his cot feeling quite satisfied with himself, quite happy for his accomplishments and, and for building something that looks so good. Now he's a little worried about the storms that might come along, but he comforts him, himself with the thought that his house looks so much better than his brother's. Well, the next morning, the second little pig decides to host a party. He invites all of his friends and his brothers to his new house. And, and at the party, he takes out his fiddle and he sings, I built my house of sticks. I built my house so fine. Hey, diddle diddle. He played on his fiddle and danced for a very long time. Now, the Second pig knows that he should have built a stronger house, but he doesn't want to spend the extra time or money or effort to do it right. And since his stick house looks good enough, all he wants to do is fiddle around. The second pig is like a Christian who knows and understands their spiritual responsibilities, but that won't discipline himself to actually do them. And that puts God playing second fiddle. Now this lack of spiritual responsibility will have negative effects on, this, on the, the second little pig's life. Every Christian, each and every one of you, has been given a command by Jesus Christ himself. Listen to his words in Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. 
Now, our mission statement says that we are to share the good news, that we are supposed to be purposeful in reaching out to others beyond our walls. Folks, we cannot be like the second little pig, neglecting our God-given duties. James 4, 17. Anyone then who knows the good and the good he ought to do and doesn't do it, sins. That's a powerful statement. That's a real, remember, so if we don't do what God is calling us to do, we are very simply sinning. Now remember, that second little pig thought he should have made his house sounder, but he thought to himself, oh, surely nothing will happen. It'll be at least another 10 years before we get a big storm. What the second little pig doesn't realize is that Christians have a responsibility to build up the church by reaching out to others at all times, everywhere in everything we do. Jesus has given us another commandment that he calls the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, just like the second little pig, we need to stop fiddling around, folks. We have a responsibility to be evangelistic. We have a responsibility to touch the lives of others and to share the good news of Jesus Christ. So how are we doing on that? Let's see what the third little pig's up to. Now, the third little pig was a clear-headed little pig, and he decided to build his house out of cement blocks on a, on a strong foundation. It took him a long time, and the work was difficult and tedious, but the third little pig was looking forward to the peace and comfort of a strong, sound home. So slap, 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 away he worked with his bricks and mortar. When he saw a task that needed to be done, he didn't wait around for someone else to do it. He did it, and he did it well. Now, Christians who are like the clear-minded third little pig are diligent. They are alert and in control. They see the needs of others, and they reach out to meet those needs. They don't mind the hard work that they put into the mission field because it means it strengthens their relationship with Jesus Christ. And they realize that this will lead to a future of peace and comfort. We must reach beyond our boundaries to meet the needs of others, both spiritual and physical. Matthew 25, 40 reads, And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Now, we currently have several opportunities for a mission. However, the mission field is vast, and the workers are few. Now, we must therefore strive to extend our mission field beyond our walls. We must ask the Lord of the harvest to send workers into the harvest field. And guess what? He doesn't mean ask to send them out. He means take them with you. So he's talking to you, too when he says, out into the harvest fields. Now the third little pig felt called to build his house as strong as possible. And in order to do that, he picked two very important materials, brick and mortar. Now as Christians, we are called to build the church using the building blocks which God provides for us. Every believer is given spiritual gifts to help them accomplish the tasks that God has called them to do. You can read about these spiritual gifts in 1 Corinthians and in Romans. In Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, we read, And Christ gave gifts to people. He made some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to go and tell the good news, and some to have the work of caring for and teaching God's people. Christ gave those gifts to prepare God's holy people for the work of serving, to make the body of Christ stronger. The common English Bible version puts it this way. His purpose was to equip God's people for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ. Now we can build a strong life and a strong church using the bricks that God has provided. Now the third little pig used mortar 
to hold his bricks together. The Holy Spirit is like mortar in our lives. He is the glue that binds us together and makes us strong. John 14, 26. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you everything I have said to you. And as we continue our planning process here at Westminster, we must rely on the Holy Spirit to guide us. Remember those first and second little pigs? Well, after the party, which the third pig didn't have time to go to, they decided to stop in and check and see how their brother was doing. And when they got there, they saw their brother toiling and sweating, and they said, oh, just come on with us. He was tempted. He was tempted to go on with them. They were heading to the river to relax. What a temptation that would be. But the third little pig saw it for what it was and graciously declined the offer continuing steadfastly to build his house, not accepting any invitation that would take him away from the task at hand. As Christians, we need to build our spiritual lives. We need to build our church, not this church. It's built this church with the same tenacity as the little pig. Don't stop. Keep working. No half-baked jobs. If you've seen the Disney cartoon, the third little pig sing, sings, I build my house of stone, I build my house of brick, I have no chance to sing and dance for play and work, don't mix. Well, there's a time. The Bible tells us a season for everything. And now it is our time to build. I want to paraphrase today's scripture. I'm going to use the message version to do it. But I'm going to take a little liberty here. Using the gift God gave me as a good architect, I designed some blueprints. Now Eric, he's over there putting up the walls. Let each carpenter who comes on the job take care to build on the foundation. Remember, there is only one foundation, the one that has already been laid, Jesus Christ. Take particular care in picking out your materials. You realize, don't you, that you, you, are the temple of God. I don't want to hear any of you bragging about yourself or anyone else. Everything is already yours as a gift. Eric, myself, Amanda, Sherry, Tom, Diane, I could go all here and name every one of you, is a gift to each of the others. The world, life, death, the present, the future, all of it is yours. And you, are privileged to be in union with Christ, who is in union with God. Now, as we continue our planning through New Visions, we have some important questions to ask ourselves. We need to know who we are, why we exist, and what it is we ought to be doing. How are we doing in building and reinforcing our spiritual lives? How are we doing in building and reinforcing our church? How are we doing in building and reinforcing our community? See, I'd ask, are we ready? Are we ready when the storms come? Because I guarantee you, they will come. Are we ready when the big bad wolf comes along? You know that, that, that thing we call Satan? Are we ready? Will our house stand? Or will we be saved by the hair on our chinny chin chins? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.